God damn, there's never been a Saturday without tires in my way. Nah, got moto rodas. The groundhogs near Nick's garage are out for a morning walk and a little sunshine. It's a sure sign of spring. The shop is busier than ever, changing daily drivers over to their summer tires and taking care of the muscle car business. Here we are another week at the shop and the shop is uh, loaded with uh, muscle cars here and uh, I've got one outside that I want to show you guys. Come and see this one. Nick and Vasily are taking advantage of the better weather and working on this one outside. It's a 68 charge with a 440. My client had it towed in the other day and told me that uh, he had a backfire. He blew the intake gasket out and uh, had issues. So he had it running for two years with a carburetor. Then he decided to go to fuel injection. Now. I don't know, he probably did something wrong. He added fuel injection, and after that, it didn't run well, and he had a few backfires. And take a look at this. Check out his intake gasket. Blown right out, right there. See that? That is blown out of place. Oh, you should've seen the backfire yesterday. Jesus. I was standing in front of the car, right over there where you are, and the backfire came out so big, it was like four or five feet big. Flame right up to here. And even the people across the street saw it uh, yesterday that uh, I was standing here, it was a big flame that came out of here. And I said, you know what? We have issues here. It's not just a fuel injection issue. We have uh, mechanical problems for sure. I thought I burned my eyebrows, but I didn't. Anyways, so we made a compression test on that side and he found that one cylinder was zero. With the engine spitting fire like a dragon and no compression on cylinder number four, Vasily took a look through the plug hole with a bore scope and didn't like what he saw. Now, it's our turn to see. What happened? We don't know. This is not normal. I've never seen this before. A blown intake gasket that bad. So now, Vasily's gonna remove the intake manifold and the cylinder head and see what we've got under there. Here's another mystery again with another 440. So, uh, I'm gonna start tearing it down and see what we've got. And I know that if you got a cylinder with zero uh, compression, we have a mechanical problem. So for that reason, we're gonna remove the cylinder head and see what's going on. You don't know what's gonna roll into our garage next. I got all kinds of jobs. Simple fixes I don't get. But when I get cars that people cannot fix on their own, they all up end up in my shop. And here's a perfect example, right here. And everybody loves the 68 Charger, second generation. We have one right here, we're working on it. Purple, nice car, but the thing is, let's get it running. What do you expect to find in there, buddy? Uh, probably a hole in the piston or yeah. a broken piston, something like that. I don't know, you think they uh, You think they dropped the bolt like the other 440? Who knows, you know, again, they did something, they removed the uh, carburetor to install the uh, EFI, and the problem started right after that. Who knows, you know what, it's up to us. It's up to us to find out what went wrong. Well, we don't know yet, we're gonna find out. There's a lot of things, uh, even the spacers are here. I don't know why they have them. I'm not crazy about that. There we go. Here it is. Wow. This is gonna need some tuning. Yes, you know, uh, we've been playing lately with a lot of uh, fuel injection. I know we did a test a long time ago with one on the dyno, but you know what? We picked up a lot of experience right now playing with fuel injection. And of course, we're gonna get this done and we're gonna tune it to work with the fuel injection. And you know what? When they run good, they run nice. It's a good thing to have. So in the meantime, let's see what went wrong with the engine. 
Nothing. I see nice stuff though. I see a roller cam, roller lifters. The way I like it. Wow, check this out, eh? Did this get blown out or what, eh? Wow. Here it is, you guys. That's a backfire inside the crankcase, which is like an explosion inside the crankcase. A lot of fuel was behind the pistons, so uh, what caused it, we don't know. But uh, we're here to find out what went wrong. God, they did a lot of work on this motor, whoever did it. I'm gonna get another into gasket to make a comparison. Check this out. This is the inside of the engine, which is the crankcase. He had a large backfire, and look at that, he blew out the gasket. And this is what originally what the gasket should look like, the other way around. Here's a good used one, look at it. This is the way it is. It's made out of tin, it's a sheet metal gasket. It's a baffle actually, and uh, look what happened. Backfires, you blew it right out. Wow, this is something, eh? Look at this. What a mess, eh? So anyways, let's keep going. Look at that, classic and muscle from South Australia. From now on, I'm gonna start wearing uh, the shirts I get from my viewers, now that the summertime is coming slowly, and start wearing the shirts from all over the world. Yeah. Here we go, I'm gonna take off the head very soon. Who knows, uh, maybe when they install the uh, E. When they installed the EF5, they did something wrong. Maybe they missed the firing order. I don't know. I looked at it; it looked correct. But then again, uh, they brought it. On, they brought it with the uh, tow truck, so uh, it wasn't running at all. As he gets ready to pull the head off the 440, Vasily is eager to confirm his hunch of a damaged piston. I hope I was right about the, the damaged piston. If not, Nick is gonna start looking for two mechanics instead of one. <laughs> See, it was not burning. Number four clearly wasn't making combustion. Vasily was right, but there's more bad news for the client. Oh, he has two broken pistons. We have one piston has a hole right here. One hole right there. Hopefully he has no Seal, dam seal the damage. And we have another one right there. In there and in the middle. Two broken pistons. Yeah, I feel a little ridge here. And but I mean they took a beating the cylinder, so it's only normal. Yes, the guy's gonna need a new, he's gonna need a rebuild. I knew it because I put my camera inside and I saw that hole. I didn't know about that one, but I knew about that one. But what happened here? What went wrong? So where does that piston went? Where did it go? We're missing a piece, eh? We're missing like a piece that big, man. It went out the exhaust, that's where it went. So what have we got? Wow, a hole in the piston. And a broken piston. Wow, two, two cylinders are gone, eh? Jesus, I knew there was a mechanical problem. Well, Vasily checked the last uh, couple of days ago and said, Nick, we got a mechanical problem. Yeah, there it is. 
So he came in for tuning and of course replaced the intake gasket. Well, you know what? We got an issue, we got to remove the engine and have a major overhaul. In the meantime, I got to call my customer next week. Let's see, let me get a rag. Where the f did that piston go though, man? I'm curious. Did it went out the valve? Where did it go? What the hell, where did it go? Oh, I'm sure this missing piece got blown out. Maybe it's inside the header or through the exhaust. So much for uh, replacing an intake gasket and tuning it. We gotta take out the engine and overhaul it. And of course, see what happened, what caused all this. I don't know what he's done. I only met the customer for a few minutes when he brought the car here on a tow truck and then he left after that. But I got a good story to tell him that uh, tuning and an intake gasket, forget it. Who's got pistons to do here? Now what happened? How did he get holes in the pistons? I don't know. One of his buddies tells him if anybody could tune it with EFI, when it comes to Mopar, take it to Nick's Garage down here in uh, Laval, Montreal. But right now I've got my customer. I've got to call my customer and tell him that he's got a mess here. From what I see here, the engine has to come out and do a complete overhaul and go through the whole engine, see what he's built here. Because maybe he's got the wrong package or whatever he's done, I don't know. But we're going to take it from scratch. Another full Ford here to get built at Nick's Garage. And now, Vasily will show us how not to measure an engine. I'll tell you right now, I'll tell you right now, it's about four, four and a quarter. Four and a quarter bore size. <laughs> That's how you do it. Very cheap. You know, you can get it at the Renault Depot, Home Depot. Canadian Tire has it. You can buy whatever you want. And you know what? All purpose tool. You want to know if it's bored out? You know what? It's marked on the piston there, but I can't read it. But you know what? what? We'll That's use my uh, caliper here. I think I have facts, George. No, no, it's a uh, four and a quarter, is a three, three, four, four Hemi. Here four, it is. There you go. It's 30 over. It's a 4.350 bore. You see of it? Of course. Okay, 30 over. Anyways, you know what? It's got serious damage. A little bit off. It's okay. You know, owning a shop like mine, when I play with old school cars, I get all kinds of jobs. I get Lincolns, the guy converts to four wheel disc. I don't know what they did. Had no brakes. I got this guy puts EFI. I don't know, he damages the motor. I've got all kinds. I have another guy who installed the EFI in a Mustang, which is a 67 Mustang outside. Another issue, so we're working on that. I think we uh, figured that out this morning, so we're okay with that one. There's another one there, Shelby Eleanor. We're installing electric handbrakes because the, somebody did a custom work on that and it's not working well, so it's our job to uh, figure it out. So that's the next one. Then we got the Cobra kit car. The guy brought in a, a kit car with the 302. Now we installed the 351. I couldn't find a, head, a set of headers that would fit the car perfect. So I had a friend of mine's dad come in and we made our own headers customized and we finally finished the job. We got him in. Now we have got new uh, brackets to lower the power steering, the alternator to get going. So a lot of these jobs that come into my shop here are not easy fixes in many cases. They're time consuming and a lot of times you got to think out of the box to get this going. For example, like that Viper we had last week. You needed a fuel regulator. You think they're available? You, they're not. Well, I needed a regulator for the uh, Viper because uh, when the fuel pump was working, all it did was make it a U-turn with the fuel pressure in the tank. It wouldn't bring its pressure to the front. And everybody thought it was a fuel pump, but it wasn't a fuel pump, it was a fuel regulator. Anyways, we had to uh, customize something, get a fuel regulator from something else, design it, make it fit, and make it work. So that is thinking out of the box. And this is what we do here. A lot of the times there's nothing on the market to make it work or fit or whatever you want it to do. So what we do here is we try to make it work with uh, using our brain, let's say, you know, make it work and of course make it drivable. For example, like my uh, Challenger, Kowalski. Come, I'll show you. I bought a new set of trims for the uh, tail lights. And of course, you think they fit it? No, they didn't fit. I had to paint them fit and then I had to trim. The way they work from the factory is when you tighten them down, they level out. But in this case, every time I tighten them down, one was higher than the other. So what you got to do is you got to get a file and file behind the chrome so that when you tighten it down in place, it levels out like you see right now. So you see, everything needs work. 
This is what we do here. We do our best to make it work. All right, nothing simple. Uh, even the clips that I installed for the uh, moldings for the back window, which we are installing the glass in the car today, when my buddy comes in, and uh, you think uh, when you put these little screws and you tighten them, they tighten in place? No, they all turn free. So now you have to close them up, make a little hole beside it, so it can be nice and tight when you turn the screw, so the clips are nice and solid on the body. The problems and frustrating details that fill Nick's life at the shop are balanced by the beautiful machines that he gets to work with each day and the people who share his passion for them. And today is no different. You guys, remember that coronet, 68 coronet that came in here with the uh, bolt in the uh, chamber? So as we finished building the engine, we had a dyno tested, and now we have it in the car. So now we're just gonna take a little test drive. Not a fast one because it doesn't have great brakes, and also it is not plated. So we're just gonna go around the block and see how it goes. So let's go for a little joyride. Okay, it's an original car, matching numbers, unrestored, as you guys can see. Look at this, see that? Look, the brake goes to the floor. Look at that. And then the brake light comes on. You know? Not only that, we have another issue. I checked that somebody installed the front disc brakes on this car, and this caliper jam doesn't work, and this caliper on the right-hand side belongs on the left-hand side because the bleeder is on the bottom of the caliper when it should be on the top. Anyway, it's another, that's another uh, job we gotta look at. But in the meantime, I just wanna see how the engine goes and the transmission and the clutch. Maybe we should have cleaned the windshield, eh? Uh, correct to the car, I guess. It's a survivor, right? Eh? Look at this long original shifter. See, when you pull up the lever, that's reverse. Oh, yeah, I didn't know yeah. that. Of, uh, it's pretty, pretty, uh, pretty bad shape. You know, I don't know if we have gas in this car. <laughs> I guess we'll find out. The gate's showing empty. Is it not working or is it uh, really empty? I don't know. Mike, this is your car. We're driving it around. Sounds good, too. Mike, I heard you want to drive this to Texas. But before you do that, I'm going to have to check a couple of things on it. Oh my God, the brakes are up. Right? Oh my God. <laughs> oh my God. I don't think uh, this car has been driven for a few years. Is this possibly the first test drive in over 10 years? Maybe. I don't know. Was it in storage for many years? I'm not sure. But... You know what? I don't need to break, so you know what? I'm going to give a, a call to Mike and tell him uh, what you want me to do with it. Let's go. It does. Sounds good. It's all smartphones, that's right. You know, okay, I, I'm trying to get used to this shifter, right? It's mine. You know what, this, this car needs a good brake job, let me tell you. I'm gonna have to call uh, Mike on this. Let's try third gear. Transmission seems good. There we go. 
gotta go easy because uh, it doesn't have the best brakes, let me tell you. Even the exhaust is finished, eh? Yeah. You hear rattling, exhaust leaks, and there it is. So let's open the hood and take a look. Mike, you wanna see the engine in your car? Take a look. Here she is. You wanted the turquoise? Here it is, the same order. And of course, you wanted a set of original set of valve covers. They're there, ready to go. But now the only thing we gotta do is the brake job. So there you go, Mike. You wanna drive it to Texas, but we gotta do a brake job on it first. And of course, the, the exhaust system doesn't sound healthy either. It's been a busy week. It's been a busy Saturday morning here at the shop. I gotta have to run around, fix somebody's wheel on the road. I've gotta road test a couple of cars. I had to meet a new customer that came in. I met a family that came in from Germany, brought in a flag, had them sign it, and they personally hanged it up themselves here in my shop. That's done. And yesterday, uh, here at the shop, we had someone that drove in for five and a half hours, one way trip from Rimouski, Quebec, just to visit a shop. His name was Don Al, and he brought an old uh, Chrysler performance book that he uh, used to work at Chrysler for many years. And all he wanted me was to sign the book for him and take a look at my shop. So I did it. He took a tour of the shop, stayed a few hours, loved it, and headed back home after that. And now I'm getting some time here to open the mail that came in this week. We're just about to open them, and I can't wait to see what we've got. And what do we got here? Of course, another one from Australia, and the name is Paul. We have a lot of viewers from Australia. Oh, to Nick, later here. Oh, we got quite a few things here, man. And of course, here it is, 68 Charger. Oh my God, there's a lot of Mopars everywhere around the planet. And this one's done under in Australia. Beautiful. Ah, 440 built. There it is. Look at that. Quite enjoy with their cars, man, let me tell you. Oh, what's this here? Wow, what do we got here? I don't know. <laughs> Check that out. Four door with a big scoop. Wow. Anyways, I'm sure I know I don't know what they are exactly, but I'll find out after I read your letter. Oh. And this is. <laughs> The my brothers Mopar Racing. Check that out. Oh my God, I'm getting all kinds of shirts from around the world. Nice, I can't wait to wear it. Summer's coming, so I'm gonna wear my short sleeves. And what do we got here? This is a flag of Calabri. So Paul, I guess you're from uh, Italy, from the region of Calabri. You live in Australia and you love American muscle. And of course you got that uh, big black Ford there, a uh, little import, and uh, here it is. From Calabria, Italy. Here it is. Calabria, Italy. I see you also have a cruising charger and of course uh, a few race cars. So good for you guys down under. Thank you, Paul. Here we go. Here's another one from Australia. The name is Jamie. Jamie, what do you get us here now, buddy? Oh my God, check it out. As you can see, they watch us on our channel here on Nick's Garage. Here it is, Jamie here from Brisbane, Queensland, Australia. My three sons, Cooper, Lincoln, and Ty, and all of you watching your show. We love Mopars. What kind of car does Vasily drive? We think Vasily's a cool dude. Vasily drives a Camaro at the moment, but he's thinking of selling and buying a Mopar very soon. That's what his plans are. So we're gonna find out in the future. Jamie, Helen, Cooper, Lincoln, and Ty. You guys, thank you very much. And thank you for the flag of uh, Utica. And let's open it up. And I'm gonna have to put their names, all their names on this flag. Here is the flag of Eureka, stockade. Oh, look at that. 
So they did it for me. So they put their names in. Nice job, you guys. Great family, eh? An important piece of Australian history. There it is. And here's another one from the good old USA, Florida. And this is from Michael. My part-time mechanic is down in Florida right now. Papano Beach. Here we go. Hello, Nick. And close find a flight from the USA state of Florida to add to your collection. We want to thank your cameraman, your writer, editor, narrator for the fine work they do in publishing your videos. By the way, it's a one-man team. His name is George, he's the cameraman, the writer, editor, narrator, and he does all the work and he puts everything all together and then puts it on YouTube for all you guys to enjoy and watch. And here's the flag of Florida, I believe it is. Here it is, we have one already in the shop, but you know what, we're gonna put it right next to the other one. No matter how many I get, I put them all up. Thank you, Mike. Another one from the USA, from the state of Kentucky. And Greg, let's see what you got us here. Now, as usual, every envelope comes with a letter. I love what you guys write, man. I just love it. Greg, thank you very much. Now, you know, after so many flags going through my shop, I don't even know what I have anymore. Oh, here it is, the, the flag of uh, the state of Kentucky. Nope, I don't have this flag. Thank you, Greg. I'm gonna put it up in my shop. And here's another one from the state of Michigan. And this is from Greg. Here is something, an envelope from the city of Homer, Homer, Michigan. Okay, here we go. You know, I have to give you guys a special thanks to every one of you guys because a lot of you guys go out of your way to do this. Run around, look for a flag, get an envelope, fill it up, write a letter, run to the post office, put a stamp on it, cost you a few bucks in time. You know what, you guys, I really appreciate it. I love you all. And I, I, just, can't, I, I just can't believe what you guys are doing. So here's a flag of Michigan. Oh yeah, here's a flag of Michigan. Here it is. Great, I don't need to put your name on it. You already have it here. From Greg Adams, home in Michigan, to Nick's Garage, May 10th, 2019. Greg, thanks a lot, buddy. Those are true followers, you better believe it, man. This is awesome, man, I can't believe it. It doesn't stop, I'm getting more and more mail every week. Uh, sometimes when I'm in the office here in the front, I see the postman driving by and he waves and he goes to me, uh, nothing today. But then he goes, maybe I got something for you tomorrow. And then very next day he comes with three packages and he goes, man, I don't know what you're getting here from around the world. You know, it's awesome for him to come in and give me these envelopes. And he even looks at him himself and says, Nick, look, from Australia, New Zealand, USA, Germany, Finland, or whatever. Anyways, you know what? It's all exciting and it's all good stuff. Another one from the US and this is from Corey from uh, Wyoming. Let's find out. Let's see what he's got. Hello, Nick from Gillette, Wyoming. Here's the flag of Wyoming, Corey and Rebecca. I gotta make space now because I think I'm running out of room here in my shop. But you know what? I have to uh, make room. There's no way, there's no way I'm not gonna put these flags up. I'm gonna go out of my way and find a place and put them up. Nick will find a way to put up every single flag he receives. He appreciates all his viewers and the efforts they make to show their respect. Special people like Marianne and Chris from Vermont here. They came all the way up to say hi to Nick today and the boss is happy to welcome them in for a look around. Chris, so you brought it here in person from Vermont? Yeah, from Vermont. <laughs> Thank you very much. Because Nick's a celebrity. <laughs> Thanks a lot, man. Wow. Oh, I watch him do the uh, getting all his toys and everything and he's like, oh, look at this. The packages keep getting bigger. Check it out. Yeah. All right. This is exactly what we're building right here. That's what I wanted Nick to have because that's what he's building. It's exactly what we're building, yeah. That's what he's doing. Dodge Challenge. And it's burning out. Yeah, this is at the racetrack, eh? Nice, man. I'm gonna put it up in my office. Come and we gotta put your name on the flag, Chris. I put it everybody Chris, who sends me a flag. Chris because she bought it. <laughs> I don't even have one. No? <laughs> Thank you, Chris. No. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. <laughs> Thank you. Of course, I want to thank all my viewers, my supporters, my Patreon supporters. I want you guys all to like, thumbs up, push that bell button, get a notification, and subscribe. And if you know anybody, get them to watch us, and also get them to subscribe to here on Nick's Garage. And thank you very much. And you guys, if you look down below the video, we have a whole bunch of merchandise that you guys can buy. So whatever you like, buy it, love it, wear it, and enjoy it and help spread the word of Nick's Garage. And if you have some time, check out our Patreon page. We have extra content and you guys can watch it and take it from there. And we'll see you next time.